Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. There's much to be learned about faith. Faith is how God created the universe, how he spoke things in, into existence. Faith is how he has called us to live and walk and please him and overcome. And with many, it's, it's become a formal thing. People think it's their um, tenets of belief. What faith are you? What faith are you? No, it's a way of thinking and a way of seeing things. It's a whole way of life. It's a way of functioning. And it is really, it's natural for the child of God to be a believer, right? If you're a believer, what would you think? You believe. Yes. And yet we live in a world that's full of darkness, full of ignorance, confusion, and there's all these pulls on your flesh to do something other than believe. Which is why it's so important to be around the right things, be, be in a church, get fed uh, from the right, uh, through the right channels, things that build you up and keep your focus on the right thing. And you need this on a regular basis. All of us do need it on a regular basis. And when you do, you will not be easily fooled or tripped up. You'll see the enemy's design uh, from afar off and you think, uh -uh, nope, nope, I'm not saying that. I'm not thinking that. I'm not yielding to that. And you'll know what to resist and what to shut down and it'll keep you safe. When it comes time to receive, you'll be bold to, to instead of, being timid and drawing back and I just don't know if it's God's will or not. No, you'll know it's God's will and you'll be bold to step right up and lay hold and receive. It works both directions. So let's agree together to get for that to happen for us to be built up even stronger in faith today. Father, all of us agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing that only you can give. Asking for the utterance and revelation in the Holy Spirit. Asking for answers. And that which we've not seen, Lord, show us. That which we've not understood, reveal to us. That which you've shown us but we let get away or let get by us, remind us again, please. And we purpose to value what you give us and to not be hearers only but to be doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go please in the scripture to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter again. We've been continuing on this study that we're calling Overcoming Unbelief. We see in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, he's describing verse 1 about how our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea, baptized to Moses in the cloud and the sea. They ate the same spiritual food. They drank the same spiritual drink. They drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. That's talking about that first generation of Israelites that God brought out of Egyptian bondage. And all the things that happened with them, we're told in the New Testament, are beautiful graphic types of reality in Christ. Just like they all drank water that quenched their thirst out of that rock. Here it says that rock was Christ. And uh, Jesus said, you know, on the last day of the feast, he said to the one that believes out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And said this, he spoke of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So um, the Old Testament is the Word of God. It's, it is history, but it's not just history. It's the living Word of God, and there's so much more there than just an account of what happened. And that's what he's saying here. Verse 5, with many of them God was not well pleased, 
they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust like they did or be idolaters like them or commit fornication like them or tempt Christ like them. Just kept saying they got destroyed. Verse 10, neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Here we see a big characteristic of unbelief is murmuring, complaining, and that it is connected to being destroyed. Every day when we get up, so much of what happens in our life is up to us. It's not all being decided by God. He's given us a free will. We can choose what we believe or what we don't believe. We can choose what we say or what we don't say. And James, you know, talked about how that what the uh, uh, rudder is to the guiding the direction of the ship, what the bridle and bit is to the horse, steering the horse, that the mouth is to our life. Your mouth is the steering wheel of your life. If you don't like the direction your life is going, get a hold of the wheel, right? Monitor what you've been saying and make adjustments, make changes. And one of the worst things we could say is complaining. It's a yielding to the flesh. It's a yielding to walking by sight. It's agreeing with hopelessness. It's agreeing with lack. It's agreeing with darkness and death. Uh, go over to Exodus, if you would, the 16th chapter. We've already seen this account, but when we saw in, in Numbers 11 that the people complained and uh, fire broke out in the camp and destruction occurred, you might think, well, what? Boy, that's, that seems severe. That seems harsh. Well, you've got to remember, they're, they're not living in the age of grace. They're, they had just been given the law. And this was not the first time they had been uh, reproved over murmuring. This, this had already happened in Exodus 16. Exodus 16 and 2, the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And they said, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and we ate bread to the full. You brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Now why are we given an excerpt of a quote of what they said? This happened long ago. Generations have come and gone since then. Why does this matter? Why is this in the Bible? But just like Hebrews 3 in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 10 in the New Testament is telling us you need to know what this sounds like and what it looks like so that you purpose you are not going to do that. You're not going to think like that, believe like that. You're not going to talk like that. You're not going to act like that because it robbed them of the promised land. And these passages in the New Testament are saying it can rob you. Don't let it rob you like it robbed them. What were they saying? Wish we'd have just died. Wish I was dead. Were they the last people to say something like that? Uh-uh. Reckon how many people are talking like that today somewhere? I just... I just wish it was over. I just wish, it, did they really wish they were dead? If you really want to be dead and you're about to be dead, what are you complaining about? <laughs> Come on, can you see this? If you're going, we're about to die. Well, I thought you said you wanted to die. They didn't want to die. They just want to gripe. <laughs> can you see that? And, and man, it irritated the Lord. And if you skip down to verse uh, 7, he said, In the morning you're going to see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that you murmur against us? That's Moses and Aaron. 
He said, the Lord's going to give you bread to the full. For the Lord, verse 8, hears your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Verse 9, he said it again. Come before the Lord, for he has heard your murmurings. How many times are we hearing murmurings, murmurings, murmurings? Why? Say it out loud. Murmurings? murmurings. Bad. Should we make that connection? Look in the New Testament, Philippians, notice over there if you would, Philippians 2, 14. Philippians 2, 14, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Now, disputing is arguing. So let's say it out loud again, make sure everybody's on the page, because you will be tested on this material. <laughs> Not just a written test from me, but in the test of life, you will be. Say it out loud. Murmurings. Murmurings. Bad. Bad. Arguings. Arguings. Bad. Bad. Are we reading the New Testament here? Yes. This is Philippians. Do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Let me paraphrase a little bit. A crooked and perverse nation that's continually griping and complaining and arguing and fussing. Are we supposed to be different? We're supposed to be shine like lights in the world, Amen. like a light in the darkness, that doesn't just mean you're glowing like a light bulb where people can see. What kind of light are they seeing? They're seeing faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad instead of what the rest of the dark world is doing, despairing, griping and complaining, depressed and sad. Being depressed is being a bad witness. Jesus, uh, being a, uh, a Christian, is being a Christian, being one like the Christ. Well, the Christ means the anointed one. And he was and is anointed with the oil of joy and gladness above his brethren. Jesus was not a sourpuss. Huh? He was not. He was not. And a lot of these, uh, you know, paintings and and all these things that you see, Jesus so so depressed and so forlorn and so that ain't him. That's not him. Somebody said, "Well, that, that's the cross." He even endured the cross. How? For the joy that was set before him. It was hard. It was tough. But tell me, what is your strength? The joy of the Lord is your strength which is why you can't go around griping all the time and complaining all the time and being sad and win battles. That's how you lose battles. Finding fault with things, speaking against things, always being down. You know, Lord, deliver us from these negative folks. It's just all around us. And you've got, you got to set something, you've got to be strong inside you not to get sucked in to this flow of negativity that is just the ungodly world we live in. No, say it another time. This is, this is the New Testament. How many think you ought to pay attention and respect the New Testament? And when the New Testament tells you to do something or don't do something, that ought to be, it ought to be a change in your life after that point. Said out loud, do all things, do all things. Without, murmurings without murmurings and arguings. And arguings. All things means what? So when's it okay to, to complain? Huh? Where's our window? Our, our complaining time. That we can just, huh? That we can argue with God or argue against His thing. No, this, this should be never. We should do all things without that. That should be something that is spiritual contraband to us. We, we don't have it. We don't do it. And uh, most people have grown up in homes where complaining and arguing was normal. Most people. 
most church going people. And it takes mind renewal to, to do something different. And if you've done it all your life, if you've done it for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, then it's going to take some renewal. And you'll catch yourself from time to time, there you are griping about something again. There you are complaining about something again. And when you, when you catch it, I mean, even if it's in mid-sentence, go, mm-mm, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Because it angered the Lord. We saw that in that account. They, they just kept on griping and kept on griping and kept on complaining. And it brought judgment. We saw the scripture in 1 Corinthians 10, 10. Don't murmur like they did because they were destroyed of the destroyer. So what we see is complaining gives place to the enemy. And the scripture says don't give any place to the enemy. Give him no place. And like we read before that the scripture said in Psalm 77, I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Talking, you keep talking about the problem all the time. Just like faith comes by hearing, despair comes by hearing, and fear comes by hearing. What you have to do, and there's some things you need to know sometimes about a report or about the situation or what's going on, but once you hear it and once you know what the problem is, stop talking about that. Stop. And begin talking the answer. And just keep that in your mouth. Night and day. Didn't he say this book of the law will not depart out of your mouth. But you'll meditate in it night and day. That you may observe to do all that's according therein. Then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. Repetition is a necessary uh, exercise. Faith comes by what? Hearing Hearing and And hearing, uh, meditation is not just hearing something one time and saying it one time and thinking about it one time. You you have to keep feeding on something until you get full of it. You know, you could tell if your gas tank on your car was full if you didn't even have a gauge. Hmm? I mean, some of the old cars years ago that we, we had and drove, the gauge didn't work right or didn't work at all so you know uh, so you don't want to take a chance of running out of gas so how, how can you know I got plenty of gas in the tank anybody got an idea what could I do you go to the gas station you put the nozzle in the, the mouth of the inlet and you pump and you pump a little while and you can go man I wonder how much is in there or what, could, what else can you do just keep pumping is that right how do I know that it's full? It's just not, it's not a great mystery. Just keep pumping, right? Just keep pumping. Just keep pumping. Well, I wonder, I wonder if it's enough. Just keep pumping. And how will you know when it's full? It'll start kicking back out of the mouth of that inlet. And that's the same way with you. That's the same way with me. The reason that so many people, any kind of pressure comes like with them, any kind of pressure came against them, It's like a sponge. Whatever's in the sponge, when you push it, it'll come out. Right? And and isn't that what uh, Matthew said? Go to Matthew 12. Because that's exactly what he was talking about there. Matthew 12. He said, uh, verse 33, Either make the tree good, Matthew 12, 33, and his fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and the fruit corrupt. The tree's known by the fruit. That is, whatever comes out of the tree, whatever fruit that comes out of the tree, that's what kind of tree that is. And he goes on to say, generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever you're full of, out of the abundance of it, there's a lot of it full of it. That's what will come out, especially when you're pushed, when there's some kind of pressure. Why did they keep complaining? 
Because it's what they were full of. It's what they meditated on all the time. And one thing that you can see is they had been slaves all their life. Their parents were slaves. Their grandparents were slaves for the past 400 years. Well, they had a slave mentality. If there's no revelation, if there's no deliverance, how would you think? All negative. All negative. No hope. No, no victories. No freedom. No blessing. It's just all bad. How are you doing? You, you, the only songs you sing are blues. You know, how bad it is. How sad it is. And even though now they are delivered, they are free, they are healed, they have money. He brought them out with silver and gold. And there wasn't one feeble person among their tribes, the psalmist said, among those two plus million people. And they're on their way to Canaan land, promised land. And yet, they still got that. I'm nobody. I don't have anything. I can't do anything. Slave defeated mentality inside them. So that every time any kind of problem came out, they talked death. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. There's no way. There's no how. There's no hope. We're nothing. We don't have anything. We can't do anything. Now, when you hear that, you'll think it sounds familiar. Because that's what religion has taught people to talk like. I'm nobody. I don't have anything. I can't do anything. You know, we can't expect much about that. It's a defeated bondage mentality. But he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Have you been made free, child of God? Yes. Somebody say, I'm free. I've been set free. I've been delivered. I've been liberated. Hallelujah. Well, what can a free child of God be? What can a free child of God do? What can a free child of God have? All things are possible to him or her that believes. Come on, can you see that? Which is why everything God had done for them, for them to keep talking like he hadn't delivered them, like he couldn't do it for them, is irritating to God. Actually angered him. He couldn't get them to quit talking like defeated Death-focused slaves, even though they were free. Do you know you can be free on the outside and a slave on the inside? Did you know that, child of God? It, and religion has taught men and women to be beggars. Just beg. Just beg, beg, please, plead and beg and plead and beg. And... Uh, you know, and keep confessing how unworthy you are. And just keep on talking about how you're nothing and, and what, a, you know, what a failure you are. And, you know, uh, I just hope I'll be saved, but I, I, I'm such a terrible example and I've come so short. And I've, the reason Jesus had to come is because we had come short. But we're not just old sinners. We have been saved. Amen. We have been saved. We've been made right, made clean, made holy, and He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He's given us the name. He's raised us up, made us sit together in heavenly places. Amen. Sit out loud. I'm not, I'm not a slave. I don't have reason to complain. I'm, reason to complain. I'm, delivered. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm a child of God. I have reason to rejoice. See, complaining shows you don't believe it. The reason they kept complaining, talking about dying out there, they are not convinced that they are delivered. 
they are not convinced they're on their way to the promised land. Because if you were, you wouldn't be griping about this. You'd be rejoicing about this, knowing that all the things you're experiencing here are very, very temporary. Because you're on your way. Right? But if you believe this is it, you're not going to make it over there. You're, yeah, they brought you out. You're not in Egyptian bondage, but you're still in bondage and you're about to die and nothing's really changed. Well, that's why you gripe. You gripe, you complain, you gripe, you complain, you talk about dying. You talk about dying. How are you doing? Oh, not so good. Yeah, boy, this is happening. That's happening. It's so bad and it's the worst I've ever seen. And this, That's how most people talk. Many people in this world. And it's why they stay right where they are and it gets worse and it doesn't get better. But notice the next thing he said. He said, uh, verse 37 By your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned or judged. It depends on what we say as to whether we're justified, victorious, liberated, or whether we're condemned, judged, and robbed, and lost. If you really believed that, you'd stop talking defeat. If you really believed this, you'd begin to decree right now, I'm coming out. Come on, somebody say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm an overcomer. I'm a victorious one. I'm more than a conqueror. We're receiving every good thing God has given us. We'll walk in the light of it. We'll walk in the power of it. We'll walk in the victory of it. In Jesus' name. Oh, faith is quickening. Can you sense it? I mean, when you start talking like that and you start believing that instead of complaining, power begins to come up. Light and life and quickening begins to come up. And our time's up again today. (laughs) Said out loud as we leave, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I am strong in faith, giving glory to God. Praise God. We'll see you again soon back here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 702 7390.